All right. We are two minutes past one o'clock Eastern time here on the East Coast, and it is Wednesday, which means it is time for the basic training working group. Uh, looks like we've got 11 of you guys in here, so maybe we'll get a few more to pop in. Uh, but thank you all for taking some time to join me this afternoon. Most of you know me. My name is Joshua Prude. I'm a senior tech solutions engineer here at DroneSense, and we are in the basic training working group. Uh, it's crazy to think that we have been doing this now for eight weeks. Uh, today's topic is going to be MSAT, or mobile streaming and tracking. So our agenda today, we're going to cover MSAT. What is it? How does it work? I'm going to go through a full setup and demo of the basics of MSAT. And then we'll talk about some hardware considerations for some of the um, additional use cases, I guess you could say, that we have with MSAT. And then we'll uh, leave it open to Q&A and we'll wrap it up there. So first and foremost, what is MSAT? MSAT, or mobile streaming and tracking functionality, allows DroneSense users to expand their streaming and tracking capabilities beyond your drone fleet uh, to your mobile devices, ground robots, tactical drones, manned assets, et cetera. Uh, because not every scene needs a drone, but we can often you know, come up with use cases for why we might need to have some kind of streaming device or tracking capability on scene. So MSAT is something we rolled out, I guess it's been almost a year now, maybe not quite a year since we've rolled it out, uh, but we've seen a lot of great use cases, and that's why we are presenting this stuff today. So with mobile streaming and tracking, this essentially means that we can turn your Android or iOS device into, or get that system into uh, our Ops Hub and into our mobile application. So you have multiple device avatars to match your unit type, and we'll actually see those once we start going through the platform. Uh, but there's like an iPad, an iPhone, a canine unit, a boat, a fire apparatus, police car, helicopter, airplane. Uh, there's even some hidden ones, uh, kind of some Easter eggs that I'm not going to give you all the secrets today, uh, but just know that there are some Easter eggs in the platform when it comes to avatars. Uh, again, this is Android and iOS uh, compatible. You can use it with or without the camera. So maybe you don't necessarily need to stream, but you would like the tracking ability. Uh, com works completely fine with or without the camera. Using MSAT is going to make you visible in both Ops Hub and to other users on the mobile application. So in the same way that we can see other drones on the, uh, the map in the mobile app, we'll also see other device types as well. And this is hardware agnostic. Um, you know, the mobile application right now supports DJI, Auto, paired aircraft. Uh, but using the MSAT functionality allows us to pull in a lot of other hardware types even beyond drones. And so what do I mean by that? So on the Android side of things, we can utilize a capture card. And we'll get into the hardware discussion a little bit more towards the end. Uh, but by utilizing a capture card, it's going to give us the ability to essentially pull in almost any camera system into the drone sense ecosystem and therefore have it streaming. So for manned assets, this can be things like Aero Computer, Churchill's, FLIR systems. Um, and again, I'll show you the hardware that you need to kind of expand on this system once we uh, once we finish kind of looking at the basic setup. Uh, this all works with the stream notifications and mission sharing functionality. It's essentially, instead of utilizing a drone, we're just utilizing a mobile device. All the functionality is still there that you would expect. Uh, the one thing that I do want to hit on is this is not included in your drone licensing. There is an additional cost for this. Um, it's $199 a month, and that gets you 100 streaming hours, uh, so essentially 1,200 hours for the year, uh, and those do roll over month to month. Um, while I've got, I know I have a couple of my sales guys on this, uh, on this webinar, if any of you on this call would like to trial uh, the MSAT functionality, just reach out to sales at dronesense.com and we can get you set up on a trial so you can see this functionality firsthand. Uh, I'm going to throw up that QR code again just to get into uh, our support section. If you don't have that support hotline, scan this QR code. It'll give you all the information you need on our support. Um, and But what I'd like to do is jump in and actually look at MSAT and how this functionality works. So I'm going to share my iPad screen first. Just want to make sure everybody can see my screen. So what you're looking at is my iPad. And we are at the standard login page 
uh, for the DroneSense mobile application. I'm going to select my profile. It's going to ask me for my PIN number. And we're going to land at our mission selection page. So what I'm going to do is select this MSAT training mission. And once we get to this section, this is where it's incredibly important. Uh, this step is incredibly important. If you don't follow this step, you're going to end up not being able to stream and wonder why you're not streaming. Um, if you look right now, you can see our call sign, device type, and COA information. We can change our call sign if we need to. But the big piece that I'm worried about is our device type. This is incredibly important for MSAT. So I'll click in where it says device type, and you can see now we get that long laundry list populated of all the different avatars we have. Uh, again, just depending on what your use case is, what your mission type is, what your unit type is, we have several um, avatars, as you see here. So what I'm going to do, I will select a canine unit or dog, and I've got my call sign as K91234. Uh, you'll see there's another little option there, location only information. So this is where you can just go ahead and jump into the mission with the camera toggled off. So only utilizing that tracking functionality. I'm going to keep the uh, camera on. So everything looks good here. And I'm going to click join mission. And you'll see we get our, our map that loads in and our camera view that loads in. Uh, and you'll see, obviously, this is very pared down for what we're used to with the uh, you know, when we're connected to a drone, uh, but we get our map in the bottom right hand corner, our notification bell, and then just some basic things across the top. Uh, if you look kind of to the pill buttons there in the top right, this is our zoom functionality. So we'll support the full range of zoom based on whatever camera you have connected. I think on the iPad, it's like 136 times zoom. Um, let's see. Oh, excuse me, 95 times zoom uh, on the back camera of the iPad. But we can go from the back camera, we can very easily switch to the front camera, as you can see here, everybody, or we can very easily go to no camera. Uh, but very easy to jump back in to our back camera here. Same map functionality as you'd expect. If we click into the map, you'll see we see our location as well as that uh, other, I've got a boat hanging out in my, uh, my side yard. And we can also see Mike's location up here in Illinois. His device type is just an iPhone. And then I can also see Ryan uh, in his backyard with a snowmobile um, in DC. So it's it's going to function and work just like you're used to the mobile app function when you're connected to an aircraft. Uh, I can still do the same thing as far as dropping pins. These it, exact same functionality, except instead of flying a drone, we are now streaming a mobile device. It's fairly simple when you think about it. Uh, I want to hit on a couple of the limitations right now that we're still kind of working through. Um, right now, if you were to activate MSAT and set everything up, get your camera streaming, but then you closed your phone, it's going to disable the stream. Uh, we are working to figure out how to make this system operate in the back background, specifically with the tracking piece. Uh, but again, this is kind of the first iteration, so there are some shortcomings right now, but we will obviously continue to iterate and push uh, feature advancements on the MSAT. But just understand that right now, the app does have to be running in the foreground uh, and not in the background. What I'm going to do now is jump over and just kind of talk through what, what it looks like on the operations hub side of things. So give me one second. I'm going to share my screen. See, we are at the main landing page for the web console. Click in the operations hub, just like we do for our drone streams. You can see our MSAT training is active. As soon as I click this, I can click our little auto join. And now we get all of our live feeds that are currently active, as well as our device location. So I'll split the map a little bit, and I'll go ahead and column everything out. So you can see we got... Coit out in Texas. If I click out to him, you can see Coit is masquerading as a fire apparatus. And again, back to myself here in Atlanta, I've got a canine unit and a boat. Bracken's acting like a snowmobile. You can also see that aerial hazard that I dropped here. And then we've got Mossarino over suburbs of Chicago, uh, just being a cell phone. But again, you know, 
same live stream, same latency that you've come to expect from our platform, just trying to give you some additional functionality. Because again, not every scene needs a drone, but this functionality is in everybody's pocket. Everybody on the apparatus, everybody in a police cruiser, they all have this functionality in their pockets. So why not take advantage of it? Again, no, no latency, no real major con new controls or new things to learn. I, I think the biggest piece to remember is just making sure you select a device type. Um, but this to me, I think is, is, is incredibly valuable and has a variety of use cases. And again, right now, we are simply just looking at this from a mobile device standpoint. Uh, before we kind of get into advanced hardware, for, for lack of a better word, I want to, uh, to open it up and see if we have any questions back here from the group. Um, Chance Graves, if the camera is not streaming and giving location only, does that affect your 100 hours per month? No, it does not. The 100 hours is streaming hours. Um, and again, those hours will roll over month to month. Uh, if you if, if this is something you want to take a look at on your account, again, please reach out to sales at dronesense.com and they can get you set up on a 30 day demo to see you know if this is something that you can work in to your uh, to your team and to your department. And that can kind of just segue us into um, the kind of advanced part of this conversation. I am going to turn my camera on here. You can see my beautiful face. I just want to have a discussion about what we can utilize mobile streaming and tracking for beyond just cell phones and iPads. Uh, so, Coy, to answer your question, this works incredibly well um, teaming with manned resources. So, we talked about during the slide deck that on the Android side, we can integrate with what we call a capture card. Um, this is a capture card. I will post a guide uh, before we wrap up today. I'll post a link to a guide that'll give you some links to the hardware you can purchase. This is about a $15 piece on Amazon, but you can see USB-C on one side, HDMI in on another. So we take our, in, in this case, I've got my triple tech tablet here with me. When we plug this in, I wish I could stream this, um, but I haven't found a really good Android streaming um, functionality similar to what I have on the iPad. Uh, but when this plugs in to the Android device, we essentially get a pop-up that says, would you would like, to, uh, like to allow XYZ app to use USB video? And the answer is yes. And that XYZ app is going to be DroneSense. So what this does, now that we have this capture card in our Android device, any, literally, any system out there that I can get a feed out of, whether I have to go through 10 different converters, anything that I can end up with an HDMI out of, I can now stream into DroneSense. So this is ground robots, like iCore products. This is tactical drones, like the Brink Lemur. But the big piece of what I think is so amazing about this is now we can pull in manned assets regardless of what sensor package they're hanging underneath the aircraft, regardless of whether or not they're utilizing a microwave downlink, we can step in and be an additional streaming solution um, for, I would say, low altitude manned asset operations. Uh, by low altitude, all of the agencies that we have tested this with have been at 2,000 feet or below. Some of these have uh, Wi-Fi on board in their helicopters. Some of these are just utilizing um, an LTE hotspot. So they're still able to get cell signal from about 2,000 feet. Uh, but again, regardless of what sensor package, whether it's Aero Computer or Churchill, we can now pull that system into DroneSense and have that live stream capability. So now we have you know, our boots on the ground who are streaming as maybe canine units or personnel that are looking for a missing person. We have our drones in the air and now we have brought in our manned asset with their, you know, quarter million, half a million dollar sensor package hanging under the aircraft. And we are streaming all of these into one centralized location. Not multiple browser windows, not multiple pieces of software. 
These are all coming in to one centralized location that is the, uh, the drone sense uh, ops hub. So I see Sean, they've had success with recon robotics robots, uh, Zisto's pole cameras for SWAT. Again, anything that we can convert to get an HDMI feed out of, we can pull into drone sense. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of the different adapters that are out there, or different converters, rather. Uh, this first one I'm going to show you, this is a component video to HDMI. So this is similar to what we're using to get the uh, Brink lemur streamed into DroneSense. Uh, what I have here, this is an SDI to HDMI converter. So for systems like uh, older Churchill systems that don't have a, a straight HDMI out, we can take their SDI, convert it into HDMI, and pump it right into our capture card and our Android device with no problem. A lot of the newer Churchill systems and newer Aero computer systems, they have a straight HDMI outline uh, that makes things incredibly easy. Uh, but for systems like the i robots, the Brink Lemur, and some of the other systems that are out there, you're going to have to get a converter. Um, on the low end, these are around $20. I think the SDI to HDMI converter was the most expensive at around $90. Uh, and I know I have this super crazy expensive triple tech Android device that I'm showcasing. Uh, but for about the past year, Ryan and I have been testing this on $75 uh, LG Android phones and having great success. Uh, remember, especially when it comes to manned assets, because that Android device is going to be in the helicopter, you are also going to have incredibly accurate tracking um, as well. We did some training. Uh, what's it been? A couple of months now. We were out with uh, Austin Fire, Austin Travis County EMS, and Coit. Uh, was it Starflight? I don't, don't want to credit. Yeah, it was Starflight. Okay. Starflight. With Starflight, and they had tested some solutions like this before, or at least on the the tracking side, uh, basically trying to use Google Maps or Apple Maps. But the refresh rate on those is is so low, it would essentially just jump around. With our system, we are getting smooth tracking the entire time that the asset is live in DroneSense. Um, absolutely incredible. It's that same low-level latency. And again, it does not matter what sensor package that they're hanging under the aircraft because it's essentially just pulling it as an, as an external video. So these $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 Churchill systems, FLIR camera systems that are hanging under these aircraft, we're streaming into DroneSense alongside our iPad video, alongside our N300 video, alongside our Mavic video, really kind of becoming this all-in-one for streaming and tracking uh, from a public safety standpoint. The fact that we can now stream from manned assets is huge. Just understand this is not meant to replace a microwave downlink. It's not what we have designed this system for, but this is meant to be a secondary or backup system to that functionality. Um, we have several agencies around the country that have integrated with their manned units and are using uh, this functionality. Um, again, if this is something you want to try, I'd be happy to have a deeper discussion with you. Like I said, I will post a link here in just a minute uh, to the guide. The guide is specific to the Brink Lemur but we'll at least give you an idea of the setup uh, because it's pretty much the same process. Uh, it's just all about what converter you're going to be using or if you're going to be using a converter at all. But again, we've talked manned assets. We've talked devices. This could be DSLR cameras. This can be pole cameras, like Sean uh, from Dakota County said. The sky's the limit. Essentially, if we can get an HDMI feed out, we can now pull it into drone sense. And I think that that is incredible functionality. Um, with that, I know this has been a very kind of short working group training today, but I want to open this up and let's, let's start a broader discussion. Questions, comments, concerns, what do you think could make this better? How would you like to see this applied? I, I just want to open it up to, uh, to you guys and hear what you guys have to say. So, Josh, I do have a quick question for you. What's going on, Sean? So, as I've been thinking about it for a while here, 
kind of looking at your screen there and you got Mike's icon there of his iPhone or his iPad for MSAP. Is there any talk of making that icon a little bit smaller? So if you end up having four, six or eight people having their icons on the screen, it's not taking up the entire screen. So what you can do is you can come down here uh, into the mission manager and you actually can choose some sizes. So if I go smaller, you see, it gets a little bit smaller. Would you like to you know, even smaller than that, basically? Yeah, maybe. I guess I learned something new every day from you guys. Thank you. Hey, that's what, that's what we're here for, brother. Uh, are there any, you know, let, let me let me share my iPad screen again. I'd like this is this is one that always seems to get some interesting responses. Um, are there any other device types that you you know would like to see listed? Uh, you know, right now, like I said, we have this list. Um, I did allude to some Easter egg avatars. There might be some Star Wars related Easter eggs um, in the Drone Sense platform. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what those are, but if you were to change your call sign to maybe something Star Wars related, you might be able to uncover a couple of those. Uh, there's actually some military aviation uh, avatars that are available as well. Uh, but again, I'm not going to give you those uh, those Easter eggs. I'm going to see if any of you guys can come up with those on your own. Uh, simply by, I, I will say, simply by changing your call sign. Uh, you might be able to uncover some pretty interesting avatars. But are there any any that you guys would like to see applied uh, other than the list that we kind of have here? Uh, yes, Chance, it does work with a Skydio drone. We, uh, we, we proved it with the Skydio uh, last year at the Texas Robotics Summit out at Reveille Peak Ranch. Uh, which, by the way, quick plug for that, it's coming up in March. Uh, I would say it is probably the best public safety UAS summit that there is now that the uh, now that Darren's not really doing the Virginia conference anymore. Um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that as many of you attend uh, as possible. But yeah, last year we were able to prove that this does work uh, with the Skydio drone as well. And it's, it's incredibly simple with the Skydio because their controller has an HDMI out. So simply HDMI out into the uh, HDMI capture card. And now you're streaming the uh, Skydio. One thing to understand, you're not going to get flight logs. You're not going to get uh, necessarily get the tracking with, the, uh, with drones because the device isn't actually attached to the drone. It's just kind of pulling the video feed in. But if live streaming is all you're worried about, yes very easily get the Skydio in, get the Brink Lemur in, get the Loki in. Uh, again, essentially anything that we can figure out the conversion on, uh, we can pull into drone sets now. So are there any other icon types or does this list kind of make sense for, for everybody on the call today? Uh, Sean, wasn't it you that requested the snowmobile? Yeah, me and uh, Matt from North Dakota. About that's, a year that's ago. What that's what I thought. Um, oh, I would I would say like robot or just uh, I think I mentioned it in another meeting that we've had robot or okay. pole camera or camera of some sort. I'm absolutely the iPad and stuff, but to identify if those things are being used. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I think those are just make sense now that we've really figured out the robot portion of it. Um, so like a robot icon, pole cam icon. Uh, I want to say that we had an agency that also is utilizing this with their uh, their throwbots. I can't think of who it is offhand, uh, but I believe they have, they're utilizing that's, their throwbots with MSAT as well. That's what our recon robot is. Is it's a throwbot. Okay, it's nice. Little handheld one. Excellent. Uh, does everybody have a good understanding of the setup? Should we go through that one more time? I think we should. So I'm going to completely kill drone sense and I'm going to start fresh. So we come into drone sense here, log in like normal with our profile and pin. We come to our mission selection page. We hit our mission, change our call sign if we need to. But the biggest piece to remember is to change your device type. So this time I'll do a, a helicopter, join mission. 
bada boom, bada bang, here we are. Same functionality, if we jump into the map, we can see everybody else's locations. We have that same pin dropping ability. We got the zoom functionality. The one thing that I haven't tested this with, and this actually just popped into my mind, uh, are some of those FLIR uh, cell phone cameras, the, the, the FLIR attachments that'll go on Android, go on iOS. Um, if any of you guys have one of those and don't have MSAT access, let's, uh, let's connect after this. And I'd like to uh, see if that's something that would function too. Um, I never really considered that until this exact moment. Um, but again, that easy to log in, that easy to stream. Matthew gives us what we need. See all of our different device types here. Looks like Charles came online as well with an iPad. Coit still kicking around as a fire apparatus. Yeah, Bracken as a snowmobile. And again, just jumping back into Ops Hub. Give me one second here, jump back in, share this tab. We go our MSAT, auto join, and again, just like we're looking at drones, got four devices here. So it's that same functionality, guys. Nothing new. You can see Coit over there working at the park. Uh, if any of you guys have ever been on a demo with Coit or any training with Coit, you will know that he is outside 99% of the time. Uh, Kevin, where are you pulling your icons to drop? from the mobile application. Okay, yeah, great question. So let me just share that screen again. Um, so here we are in the camera view, and this is the same for uh, whether or not you're connected to a drone. Jump over into the map view, left-hand side under the bell icon or the notifications icon, you'll see as soon as I click the map, little pin appears. We get our 10 icons that we have available on the mobile side. So we can do blocked or no access at this road right here. It drops it on the map here. And then if I switch back over to uh, switch back over to this view here in Ops Hub, you can see the pin I just dropped there as well. Uh, right now on the mobile side of things, there are only those 10 icons available. We are working on the way to best integrate all of the feature layer functionality to include line types, and all of the different iconography that we have available. Uh, but at least for now, you have these icons. And if, you know, for whatever reason, these don't work for what you're trying to do, you also have the ability to edit the text around them as well. So I can click on this targeted search icon that I just dropped. Uh, but let's say, you know, I want to change the, uh, the name from targeted search to um, point of interest. Confirm. Now it shows up as point of interest. And if I jump back to um, Ops Hub, you'll see this here as well. Now the one piece to remember in Ops Hub with your map layers is if you don't have this toggle to show the feature labels, you will not see the text as it changes. So you'll see as I change that, now you can see it says point of interest. Kevin, I hope that answered your question. Uh, all right. Well, guys, if there are no more questions, we are at 35 past 1 o'clock, and I will go ahead and wrap it up today. This has been recorded, so if you need to come back and get refreshed on MSAT, we will have this live on our YouTube hopefully by next week. Um, as always, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, Coit, like any of the rest of the team, We'll do whatever we can to help you. If you want a trial of MSAT or some more information on MSAT, please do not hesitate to reach out to sales at dronesense.com. We'll get you spooled up with a trial. Happy to get some additional training if you need it. For those of you that are on shift today, please enjoy the rest of your shift and stay safe. And we will uh, we will end it there. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, tune in next week. I will not be running the, uh, the group next week. I will be um, out of the office. Uh, but tune in next week. Our topic will be understanding teams, roles, and permissions. So not one to miss. Again, thank you all for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers, guys.